Hello and welcome to this first video where we're actually doing something, right? In the actual first video, I presented you the project and the prerequisites that you should at least have a bit of a knowledge on so you can, you can uh, continue on this course without having any sorts of issues. And uh, in this lecture, as I said, we're actually going to do something. And to get started with, we're going to create our project. So I already have Unity open here. As you can see, I'm using four, uh, 5.1 but you should be good with any of the 5.x versions. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to hit new project here because we're going to do, uh, we're going to start a project from scratch. I'm going to choose 2D because this is going to be a 2D project. It's going to be a 2D game. Uh, you can just choose a location where you can save your project at and just choose a, a good name, a meaningful name. I'm going to name mine Wood Breaker. Uh, game. Just hit create project and we're good to go. So as per the title of this video, we're just going to be bringing uh, the stuff that we're going to be using uh, and for that I mean sprites and uh, UI elements that we might be using throughout this course. So I'm just going to bring mine here on project. I'm going to select project here and I'm going to bring my assets into the project. I already have them open here, so there's a folder named Sprites. There are two subfolders, one is Game, where we have the actual uh, sprites of the game, and there's one named UI, where we have the UI elements. So I'm just going to bring uh, both of these, drag them and drop inside the, the Assets folder. There you go, it's already been imported. Let's just check that everything is marked to be 2D or UI because this is a game that basically uses sprites and UI elements. So I'm gonna go inside my sprites folder, inside games folder, and if I click in one of these, they are uh, already set at to the texture type 2D and UI. So in case they're not, just go ahead and change the type to sprite and then click apply. And let's just check my UI elements. They're also marked to be 2D and UI sprites, okay? So what we'll be doing in this particular lesson is just uh, creating a few prefabs that we will be using along the way. Something that you might notice is that my viewport, uh, my, my layout is not set up as yours probably is. So if you want yours to be the same as mine, you can just choose the default layout. And this is probably what you have because this is this is the default layout of Unity. And you just click on the game tab here and you bring it to the right. And there you go. That's set up, okay? So as I said earlier, we're just going to be setting up some prefabs that we must have to use later in this project. And actually, the only prefabs that we uh, that we need because they're going to be instantiated in our game in real time are the wood plank sprites, because the apple is something that's already uh, that's going to be in our game from the beginning to the end. So it's something that we can just place in the scene right away. The leaves bush, the same thing. But the wood planks, we have to create them dynamically. So the best thing we can do is just to create uh, prefabs from them and then we can use them uh, afterwards, okay? So I'm going to be bringing one of these to my scene. Just click in one of these, drag it and drop on your scene. And there you go. It's a bit too big, as you can see in our, in our game view. I'm going to be bringing them down a little bit in terms of scale. So I'm going to scale them down maybe to 0.1. So they're just too big. I'm going to round this down to 0 0.1. And they're also going to have a collider because uh, as you've seen in the, in the project preview, this game is basically about uh, moving this app around, actually not directly, but indirectly moving this app around and make it hit these wood planks. 
So in order for this item to receive collision, it must have a collider, okay? So to add a collider on, on this element, you just go to Component, Physics 2D, and then Box Collider 2D. There are a few other options, but I'm gonna choose Box Collider because this is basically a rectangle, which can be very precisely represented by a box collider. So if you click on these, there is a collider that uh, wraps up our element very nicely, okay? So this should be good. And to create a prefab out of these, I'm just gonna create a new, a new folder here. I'm gonna click on Assets here, right-click, Create Folder. I'm gonna name my folder Prefabs. And inside this folder, I'm, I'm gonna just drag and drop my game object here. And as you can see, it now has name turned to blue, which means this is an instance of a prefab. And in this case, it is an instance of this pref, prefab right here. I can now just drag and drop this prefab as many times as I want. The scale is already set to 0.1 as we want. And they also have this box collider, so they're all set up. We just have three more variations of this wood plank, as you can see inside my game folder, inside the sprites folder. There are two more variations, the wood plank one and the wood plank three. So to add these as prefabs, you don't have to drag them here, scale them down to 0.1 and then add a collider. What you can do is just choose this same prefab that we already have because it's all set up, but we just have to change the sprite to be something else. So I just click this little um, circle button here and then I can choose another sprite, in this case the wood plank 2. There you go, but we can just hit apply to apply these changes to the existing prefab because it's going to overwrite all the things that we did in this wood plank 1 prefab. What we can do is just change the name of this element, so I'm going to change it to wood plank 2 and I can just drag it and drop inside my prefabs folder so I can make a prefab out of this element. So they're independent, they're different, and it's a much easier way to set up your prefabs when they just have a slight change from one another. And what I can do for the third element is just to select this one, change the name to wood plank 3, so we don't get naming issues. Change the sprite to be the wood plank 3, and drag it and drop inside my prefabs folder, and they are all set up, okay? So I'm just gonna remove this element here, right click, delete, and maybe I can start to set up my, my elements here. I can just uh, put the, the scenario here, so I'm gonna go under the game folder, drag the scenario here. Uh, I'm gonna zero out the position, so on X I'm gonna make it zero, same as Y. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit, it's kind of too big. Okay, so this looks good. Um, actually, instead of scaling my element down, I can just click on my main camera and you can see it's set to orthographic because I, I set my game to be 2D. In case you you miss this step and you set your, your game to be 3D, you're gonna have to go in your, in your camera and change it from perspective to orthographic, okay? And other than that, you're gonna have to choose this 2D uh, option right here, okay? So since my camera is orthographic, I can just change the size and this is going to change the, the volume that it's actually rendering. And from that, we're gonna render a much bigger area so we can uh, scale our elements this way as well. I'm gonna leave it as being five, that's what it was, because this, this scale is good enough. I'm just gonna bring my leaves brush here because this is our actual player and it's enormous so I'm gonna bring the scale down to maybe 0 0.1. No, that's too small, maybe well, maybe 0 0.1 is good. Let's try changing the y-axis. No, no, that's much smaller than I thought. 0 0.2 looks good. On the z, we can just 
make it one or 0 0.2 doesn't really matter because there's no such thing as a, as a Z dimension here because we're dealing with 2D, okay? So I'm just gonna click on this, on this move tool, move it down a little bit. I'm gonna zero out the X position so it's basically centered. And there's an issue here. It's actually not an issue, but it's something that might bring us problems in the future. As you can see, the scenario has its order in layer as one. Our leaves bush also has the order in layer as one. So they're actually overlapping each other. You can see this, but they are. What we can do is set the order and layer of the leaves bush to be one, just to render it after the scenario. So a higher value means render it after, a lower value means render it before. So in case I, I put the leaves bush to render before the scenario, which has the order zero, in case I put minus one here, you can see that the leaves bush gets rendered before the scenario, but what we want is the inverse. So I'm just gonna make the leaves bush with an order of one. I'm gonna also bring down the elbow here. It's also huge, so I'm going to scale it down to 0 0.2. That's too big, maybe 0 0.1 will do. That's also huge, maybe 0 0.05. This looks good. So I'm also going to zero uh, out all of its positions, move it down a little bit, and change the order to B1. Since the apple and the leaf bush will never overlap each other, we don't have to care about the order and layer of those because we, we're gonna have colliders for them. So every time the apple hits the collider of the leaf bush, it's gonna reflect its movement. So they're never gonna overlap each other and this is not a problem. Well, for now, this is all we need because in the next lecture, we're gonna move our platform around. The apple will stand still for a little bit because we have to deal with first things first. But I guess this is it for this video.